First, some basic rules for off-road driving. Engage the low range gear and lock the central differential before you drive in difficult terrain. Always use the pedals extremely sensitively, avoiding abrupt movements. Brake only when absolutely necessary. Use the clutch only when stopping or changing gear, not forgetting to take your foot completely away from the clutch pedal again. Hold the steering wheel in both hands, but don't put your thumbs inside or driving over a pothole could be very painful. Stop and explore on foot. Determine your exact route. Pay a special attention to the nature of the ground beneath the undergrowth, so when driving through you avoid deep holes, bogs, and other obstacles. Select the gear which is most appropriate for the type of ground and its inclination, and drive as slowly and as smoothly as possible into the critical area. Follow your chosen route as closely as you can, taking care to steer clear of tree roots and large stones. If you're forced to drive over small trees or bushes, do so at the same very low speed. This minimizes damage to both vehicle and nature. Mud demands a brisk speed, whereas stony ground, as in this example, should be taken more slowly. Above all, take to heart the most important rule of off-road driving. Drive as slowly as possible, as fast as necessary. The Camel Trophy is awarded to the best driver, not the fastest. Before attempting to drive up a particularly steep slope, estimate its length and gradient. Don't forget to re-tighten the fan belt, check the brakes, and select the appropriate gear which will usually be second or third. Get up to speed on the level so that you can ease off the accelerator when climbing. This will help to prevent the wheels spinning. If you don't reach the top because you've picked the wrong gear or the going is slippery, don't just brake and lock the wheels. It's much better to stall the engine, immediately engage reverse gear, release the clutch completely, restart the engine, and steer your way back down in a controlled manner. If you're successful on the next attempt, avoid driving over the summit too quickly. You don't know what might be waiting for you. In no time at all, the wheels have burrowed their way into the soft sand, and the maneuver has to be broken off. So far, we've been using the first part of the speed rule, drive as slowly as possible. But now it's time to apply the second part, drive as fast as necessary, then it can be done. Don't be too proud to admit such a mistake early enough to start again from the beginning, before you get stuck. Arrive at the highest point as slowly as possible. Change down into first gear and roll down to the bottom without braking. Don't be too proud to stop on the summit to change gear, but be careful not to let the higher of the two front wheels go up the bank or over any other obstacle. This is the only thing that could be dangerous at the highest point because when the vehicle is at such an extreme angle, a stone is all that's necessary to shift the center of gravity enough for you to turn over. 
bumpy and stony surfaces simply have to be taken at snail's pace. Suspension and springs are built to take it, but not if you have a heavy foot. Even at this speed, you should try either to steer clear of the larger obstacles or drive over them with the wheels. Because as you know, there's not a lot of room to spare underneath the vehicle. But don't forget, do it slowly. And here too, you should take the path of least resistance in the interests of both vehicle and environment. It's no use knocking your head against a wall. Gentle, slow, and smooth driving is called for here. If you should ever find yourself in the position of having to drive through a wood or heavy undergrowth where there is no road, it's always worth taking the trouble to check out the terrain beforehand to find the route which will do least damage to vehicle and nature. In the extremely difficult conditions which are a part of this event, the speed rule has proved itself over and over again, as slowly as possible, as fast as necessary. Driving this way will ensure that you reach the finish in one piece. And then you can think about applying for the next Camel Trophy qualifying test. Because now that you've successfully completed this course of lessons, you're well equipped. At least in terms of driving skills.